everybody. It's Matt Catling here for your mini accelerator. And this is a special accelerator because we are supporting everybody on our NLP accelerator. And so we've had a really, really good week, um, some really amazing content and some amazing breakthroughs as well. We've also had a few questions come in. And so I thought I'd share this with you is the journey of rapid change with our company. Uh, my mission is to create a positive world one person at a time. Um, if we look at your future events, what we want to help people do is to create freedom, total freedom in both life and business. Now, often one, and I, I believe this, one path is to create freedom around money, which can then unlock all of the other areas as well, um, because money is such a big stress. And so you'll see there's an entrepreneur, sorry, an entrepreneurial component to our journey of rapid change. But it's deeper than that because I think everybody needs to start to look at their leadership and start to really treat themselves like a business, especially if you're employed and what's happening in this world with all of this change that's occurring. Um, we're going to see massive job losses. We're going to see things just getting cheaper. We're going to see tech taking over all of those things. So we need to start to see our value. We need to start promoting ourselves. So many people, they don't promote themselves because there's a blockage, like guilty receiving, or they feel like they don't want to be bothersome or whatever it is, but the challenge is your competitors are. And so we want to look at all of these types of things and balance those polarities of giving and receiving. And that's really what the journey of rapid change is through my company. Now, I typically start people off with a bit of a breakthrough. Now, remember, breakthroughs versus breakouts. Breakthroughs are where we shift often limiting patterns. And what follows a breakthrough is typically clarity. Clarity and also new emotional states, different um, or typically the opposite of the wound in terms of polarity changes. So that's typically where I like to look at as a journey to start with. And this is where we have our Breakthrough Accelerator program. And what we do is we give you like the instruction manual number one on how to use your unconscious mind, because I want to teach people to fish so that they're not dependent on, you know, a therapist or whatever it is to release limiting beliefs, negative emotions. We're not given this instruction manual at school and we really should have been um, because we have this incredible unconscious mind that when you directionalize this unconscious mind, when you integrate this unconscious mind, we really start to get clarity, momentum, and we start to live a different life. We start to play in a different way. So the breakthrough occurs, and this is kind of the first step is we want to learn how to use the unconscious mind, but then we want to look at the area of life you're avoiding because the things that you avoid hold the biggest opportunities for personal growth. So that's why I say, okay, what we want to look at is health, wealth, or relationships, but look at the one that as you chunk down a little bit or go deeper into that area, what's where's the paralysis? What's the one that's kind of taking up your energy? Let's work on that one first because that's going to unlock a different level of um, authentic power. And authentic power is, as I said, where you get that opposite polarity, but also we create space for your true voice, which is where you get the clarity. The next phase that we start to look at is, is leadership. And I really believe leaders of the future will have an understanding of the unconscious mind and how they can turn limiting patterns into patterns of power in themselves and other people. I really believe that leaders of the future, especially if they're in management types of positions, will really take more of a coaching role and really empower people, create an environment environments of empowerment and to really kind of help people come up with their true target. Um, I believe leaders of the future will be able to share a message that's authentic in a way that will be able to really move the masses. And I also believe, and this is kind of where the 10K Accelerator component is, is I believe that leaders of the future will have side hustles. And I think we need to start to look at side hustles. If you look at the entrepreneurial kind of approach, it's really just solving problems. And often what we do is we look at back at our past history and we go, what are the wounds or what are the problems or challenges that we've solved? Um, because there is a natural desire to contribute. There's only so much personal development you can do before it caps out. The next phase is contribution. And so as we look at breakout, and this is where I call my troublemaker side, it's time to get disruptive. It's time to get disruptive. It's time to... Um, break out to success in your business and have a whole lot of fun doing it. And we always look at the 100K week um, as a model to be able to achieve that. And so that's my Troublemakers Business Breakout. Um, 
You need to have a business to join that program. You need to be doing 10K per week. You need to be a troublemaker, basically. Um, and if you're in my network, you're probably a troublemaker anyway. Um, and then we have our ultimate life recharge retreat. And recharging, I think, is just so important. Getting back to nature, um, working on you know your nutrition, fasting, um, healing is so, so important. Nature can do this. It's just we've kind of artificialized life a little bit. And so two times a year, I go to beautiful Byron Bay up the top of a volcano and we get back to nature. We do emotional work. We do Reiki. We do personal training. We do meditation. We go on adventures. And especially with the emotional breakthroughs that um, my team and I can help people get, because we haven't got the distractions of TV, devices, food, all of those things, you're in a different environment. The breakthroughs are incredible. And this is where I always say is that, you know, when you come down from the top of the mountain, life will be different because we've really switched that true voice on. And so if you look at all of this, it's really to take someone that is kind of wounded and turn their wounds. And we're all wounded, by the way, guys. And if you don't like the word wounded, um, reframe it to limiting patterns. We all have limiting patterns. So the objective of this is to really take someone and help them shift their limiting patterns into patterns of power to get out there, make an impact and really create total freedom in both life and business. Um, I'm excited at the moment. I'm working on a, a completely different model um, that I want to share with a lot of you, especially my troublemakers, where we're looking at the 100K week and but doing it in a way that is so freeing <laughs> without funnels, without all these techie things, just kind of filtering out all of that noise and getting back to basics. And so... I'm actually going to do this and I'm going to take you guys through it kind of step by step on that journey. Um, there's a group that I have called the 100K Week. So I'm going to literally show you how to do it, strip it back from Nate, start from zero and kind of grow it to that level, 100K Week. So um, yeah, please join that group. It's a free group and I'd love to share that, that stuff with you because we live in this wonderful world at the moment. And there are so many opportunities. It's literally raining abundance. But if our wounds are up, we won't see it. It's like having an umbrella up and just deleting all of these incredible opportunities. But I think as we move into this new world and we accelerate, we've got to get out there and we've got to start to rise to a new level of authentic leadership. And we need to start playing. And the key is authenticity, everybody. That is the key, is getting on a true target and really bringing that authenticity out. That is the key. So let's continue on. NLP Accelerator, we had a great session this week. Home play was to read these pages, um, 21 to 37, 45 to 99, 111 to 136. I challenge you to get the structure of magic, volumes one and two, um, to practice building rapport, hierarchy of ideas, and the movie was to watch Thank You for Smoking. Now, if you're not part of this NLP Accelerator and you want to jump in, please reach out. Um, you can still join this program. And um, yeah, we'd love to teach you, you know, all of these incredible skills. You get certifications in NLP, timeline therapy, hypnotherapy, and my acronym, RCT, Rapid Change Technologies. So that's just a bit of a recap on the home play for this week. Um, here's a replay, recap of the content that we shared. We looked at communication. And what's really interesting when it comes to me communication is, is that we really haven't been taught. We really have not been taught, um, you know, how to communicate effectively. So therefore, if we're not semantically trained, we're probably just communicating based on our wounds, based on our representational systems. But as you saw in the presuppositions of NLP, the person that has the most flexibility is the one that will control the system. So we need to bring in flexibility. That is really the key. And so if we look at communication, 7% is only, only the words that we use. Now, if we, it's only 7%, the words that we use. Think about that. So therefore, we're missing 93% of communication. What are we taught at school? We're only taught the 7%. Tonality is a whopping 38%. Isn't that interesting, right? Tonality, your tone of voice. Think about that in relationships. Sometimes partners are like, I'm, I do communicate really lovely. Okay, but if we look at the tone of voice, hmm because the tone of voice will add meaning to the communication or the words that you use. Um, if we look at physiology, how you're standing, the gestures that you're using, breathing, all of those things, okay? Um, that is so important. It's a whopping 
So there is 93% of communication, tonal tonality physiology, that we're not taught. And so this is just this component gives you a strategic advantage because now all of a sudden you understand how to use the 93% to be able to build rapport with any type of person, but most importantly, to be able to share a message in a way that people understand it. Next one is rapport. Rapport is crucially important. Most people don't understand the process of building rapport. If we go back to the communication model, we know words are 7%. We know that tonality is 38%. And we know that physiology is 55%. Now, when it comes to building rapport, what do most people focus on? Words. Or finding something in common. <laughs> so what if we flipped that model and we went, okay, let's look at physiology first because it's 55% then let's notice tonality. And then let's look at words. Let's look at predicates, visual, auditory, kinesthetic. Let's look at predicate phrases. What is a consistent phrase? And let's look at finding something in common. Now, if you flip that model and you focus on it that way, suddenly we're going to be able to build rapport with more people very, very quickly. The next thing that we looked at is hierarchy of ideas, where we looked at chunking up, chunking down, and going lateral. Now, chunking up is where we go big picture. The more big picture that we um, that we go into, or the, you know, the more we chunk up, I should say, the more agreement we get. And so this is really powerful for mediation because I can use a certain level of questioning internally and externally to be able to take the logical levels of the communication to a higher level and gain agreement versus chunking down where I'm getting more specific. What's going to happen is, is that if I keep chunking down, what happens is, is that we get into often disagreement, okay, or analysis paralysis. Has anyone had that before where you are so stuck in the details, you cannot make a decision, the internal battle, okay, or in a relationship, you're, you're in conflict and what are you both doing? You're both getting more and more detailed, okay? The, you keep chunking down, the more disagreement occurs. So what do we need to do? We need to chunk up. And so we looked at questions on how to do that questions to chunk down and questions to chunk up. But we also looked at going lateral and we shared, there are two questions that we can use and we can ask them, ask them ourselves internally. And we can also ask them externally to go lateral. Now, a great example of a lateral chunker is Richard Branson, 411 businesses, got one business right, Virgin Records. And he looked at that business model and he, and he said, what's this an example of? What do we do really, really good? Well, we're great at customer service. We're really disruptive on price. We have an incredible brand. We have an incredible team. And we've got enormous loyalty from customers. And so he did a lateral chunk and said, where else would this apply? What are other examples of this? And so then he looked at, looked at things like airlines. And so who would, who would have thought? He's in a record business. And then he went, okay, yeah, I'm going to go and start an airline. That's a lateral chunk. And then he took that model, Virgin, <laughs> price disruption, incredible, you know, relationship with customers, um, a brand that gets attention, that is fun, that is naughty, um, and what a success. Did it with 411 businesses, an incredible lateral chunker. Now, in the session, this is what we looked at. We looked at some people kind of chunk down. That's a natural thing. Other people chunk up. That's a natural thing. And other people go lateral. And so we looked at when it comes to building rapport, we've got to work out that person's chunk size because if, they've, if they chunk down, we need to start with that. We need to start with small picture, then move to big picture or go lateral. Or if, they, if they're naturally big picture or chunking up, we start with big picture, okay? Or if they're lateral, we start with that. And again, that gets back to one of the presuppositions of NLP, which is to respect the other person's model of the world. That's what we want to do. When it comes to rapport, we're really curious. We're really interested. And people that like each other or people that are like each other, like each other. The next thing that we did is meta model. Now, the meta model communication patterns um, or language patterns is all about chunking down and looking at the specific questions that will enable us to chunk down and to uncover deletions, distortions, and generalizations. That's really what meta model is all about. We want to uncover the things that are not being said. And um, I've taught so many managers meta model, and they're like, wow, now I really know how to manage. Now I know how to uncover what people are saying um, or not saying specifically. And so I wanted to share a 
a bit of a kind of a model with you of how this looks. The surface structure. So the surface structure is our normal conversation that we're happening having every single day. Now, where does that conversation come from? Well, it comes from the unconscious, right? It comes from the deep structure. Deep structure is the unconscious specific thought. Now, if you think of like the unconscious thought, it's probably a combination of pictures, sounds, feelings, analyzing, all of those things. But what comes to the surface is really a small component of what's actually going on underneath. And I often use a metaphor. Imagine the iceberg. You see the top of the iceberg, but what's underneath that is enormous amounts of information. And so meta model is designed to uncover that enormous amounts of information or uncover the deep structure. So it kind of looks like this. We have a specific thought, okay? And remember that specific thought at an unconscious level is like a story. And then what happens is it goes through our filters. And so notice there's a whole lot that's kind of being deleted and kind of distorted and kind of jumbled up. Can everyone see that? And then what comes to the surface in terms of our language is this. So this is why people, they're trying to change up here, whereas what in order to be able to change, we need to really get back down to here. And this is where a problem well stated is a problem half solved. And that's what MetaModel is really good for, is to look at language and to look at violations of language, deletions, distortions, or generalizations. And typically the tip off is a word. And then we then chunk all the way down to work out all of the stories and suddenly when we do that, we start to loosen the grip on the problem. So I want you to think about that. A problem well stated is a problem half solved.